What's up there ladies and gents? Welcome back to another Resurrected Review. I'm actually going to start a series that I actually think I can keep up. Uh, this is kind of going to be a combination intro and beginning to this series. As you may know, last week was a Friday the 13th. Uh, but it was not only a Friday the 13th, and, you know, I did have fun with the normal Friday the 13th shenanigans. Watched one of my favorite Friday the 13th movies, Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. In my opinion, possibly one of the last really, really good Friday the 13th movies. But, did that. But also, it was a little something different as well. Last Friday the 13th was also the 50th anniversary of possibly my favorite franchise in all of entertainment history. One of the longest running franchises in entertainment history. A television show which premiered on September 13th, 1969. In my opinion, this is definitely my favorite TV show ever. Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? <laughs> so the entire Scooby-Doo franchise is now 50 years old. And because of that, and because you know that I am a big fan of Scooby-Doo, I'm going to be doing a series called The Scooby Logs. This is the 50th anniversary uh, sort of special for Scooby on my channel. I love Scooby-Doo. You guys know this. I've talked about it before. I've talked about it in live streams with other fellas. This is one of my favorite series of all time. Uh, this is my, my favorite franchise ever. It's up there with my favorite movies. Uh, it's up there with my favorite books. I really love Scooby-Doo. And it's not just a nostalgia thing. It's it's a real thing. It's not some type of uh, uh, attraction to it because I watched it as a kid. That's a little bit of it. But mostly, I think it's because I just genuinely enjoy the show. I think it's fun. And, you know, there's a lot of negatives to the show. But, I mean, despite the fact that it's got negatives and positives, that it's got ups and downs, that it's got its uh, Scooby-Doo Mr. Incorporated and its Shaggy and Scooby-Doo Get a Clue, <laughs> the fact that it has all these sort of back-and-forth moments is really part of the fact that... part of the reason that I love it. This is the uh, original... First two seasons of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Uh, and for this, this will be, of course, the first thing that I'm going to be reviewing in this series. What it's actually going to be is that every week, for at least a year, I'm going to watch one Scooby-Doo episode and I'm going to review it on here. Sometimes I might be a little late, like I am today. Sometimes you'll get two episodes a week, like you're going to get this week. But... The major thing is that I watch a Scooby-Doo movie, not movie, sorry, a Scooby-Doo episode every Friday from last Friday all until September 13th of next year. Uh, maybe not September 13th, but the 13th of, um, yeah, it won't be a Friday the 13th, but it'll definitely be maybe September 13th next year, something like that. Um, but anyway... We're going to go ahead and we're actually going to review the very first episode of Scooby-Doo in all of history. What a Night for a Night, which premiered September 13th, 1969, featuring these five characters. There's always going to be a place for this uh, lovable great day in my heart. This is actually going to stand on its own, so I'm going to set it up right here. I'm going to have a nice swig of... Pretty bad uh, Maxwell House coffee. Not a fan of Maxwell House, but I'm making it the best that I can because I have a lot of it. People have gifted me Maxwell House, so that's how it goes. Not a bad aroma. Tastes not great. But I've made it as well as I can. Made it okay. Still black. Not bad. Still very Murica. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started with this. So... The very first episode of Scooby-Doo is What a Night for a Night. Uh, the basic idea is that the gang all have to solve this mystery surrounding the, uh, the disappearance of a professor that was transporting the suit of armor that the Black Knight wore to a museum in their, supposedly their local area. Um... 
This, of course, goes crazy. Bunch of different stuff. The suit of armor is coming to life uh, by the light of the full moon. So they have to deal with that. And uh, the, the episode wraps up as it wraps up. I'm going to try to uh, not spoil as much as possible with the plot in case you haven't seen it and you want to watch along. So let's go ahead and just sort of get into the analytics of this. First off, this is not one of the great episodes of the original series. It's not one of the best. It's also not one of the worst. It still is no slouch in terms of just being an entertaining episode. Pretty fun stuff going on here. We've got, first off, Shaggy and Scooby walking through the woods. They're coming back from watching a movie. And uh, immediately, we sort of get what this show is going to be like. We get the tone. Um, the backgrounds have all of these like gnarled trees and dark night sky. But Shaggy and Scooby are both popping in the front ground. In the foreground, we well, in, in, in the front of the frame. I mean, of course, this is limited animation, so there's just background sort of running by while they're walking and they just pop off the screen. They're so colorful. So that sort of shows you automatically what this is going to be like. We've got uh, we've got these two doing funny banter while there's still some spooky edge to this because they're walking through the woods. It's dark. Um, in the cold open we've seen the black knight uh, um, waking up and supposedly attacking this professor that's driving him to uh, to the new uh, to his new home, but ultimately we eventually meet the rest of the gang. A problem with this episode is that it doesn't do a good a, a good job of introducing the characters. Uh, we get who they are in terms of what these characters are gonna be, what they're gonna do. All the different stuff about them. I mean, Daphne is the pretty girl. She is uh, um, not only attractive, but she's also pretty smart. Um, but she sometimes gets into bad situations. That's that's what we know about her. But we don't know her name for quite a while. Uh, actually, we get some of the exposition about her character more after her name. But it still takes a while to get to all of these characters' names. Velma, for instance, I mean, we know enough about her as we're going through, but we we get the whole missing glasses trope before we even know her name. Uh, with Shaggy and Scooby, we get them right up front. So clearly these two are the stars of the show. Uh, no matter what people say, these are obviously the stars of the show. Uh, we don't even hear Fred's name at all in the entire show, in the entire episode. We don't hear Fred's name at all. But we get who he is. So it's kind of a combination of bad and good writing. I'll never really straight up say that Ruby and Spears, Joe Ruby and Ken Spears, who wrote uh, this original series, created it and everything, I'll never say they're bad writers. They're not. But they have limitations within what their medium is. And it's the same thing with the animators. These aren't... This isn't bad animation. It's just limited animation. And for limited animation, it's not bad. Uh, you still do get that sort of thematic material in it. You've got Shaggy and Scooby popping in the frame um, uh, in front of pretty dark, creepy circumstances. So you've got that sort of thematic thing going on. You do the same thing with the rest of the characters. Um, the jokes here are fairly good. Uh, some some good ones include uh, Shaggy being the swingiest gymnast at school and him jumping up and just crashing through uh, supposedly several floors of museums and probably destroying untold amounts of uh, uh, art and historical relics that probably total up to millions of dollars. Uh, there's some pretty funny stuff going on there. Uh, this gag about Scooby wanting to watch Star, Dog of the Northwoods, or something like that, several times, and him, of course, talking, uh, gets you into some fun stuff, some Scooby Snacks things, that's actually introduced by Fred, who, again, we don't know his name, in this entire episode, as far as I can remember. 
and I did rewatch this, I didn't catch Fred's name at all. Uh, I just know it because I know the series. Anyway, though, overall, not a bad episode, not a horrible episode either. We got a pretty good mystery going on, uh, pretty good little twists and turns throughout it. Uh, fairly intelligent, I think. One thing that's obvious is that this might have been the first episode to air, but it doesn't seem to be the first episode that they made. I don't understand it. I guess they just kind of decided, oh, well, this is a this is okay to throw out there first. If you know anything about Hanna-Barbera, Hanna-Barbera was very much a factory of entertainment. Uh, you get a bunch of people, throw everything together, and then get it out as soon and as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Um, it might be entertainment, but it's still a business. Uh, that's sort of what I get about Hanna-Barbera, and that definitely shines through in a lot of these Scooby episodes, especially the first season. Um, there's a couple animation errors here. Uh, the, uh, the Black Knight at some point has uh, no plume on his head. Um, he is, by the way, a pretty scary, imposing villain. Not the scariest. Uh, he makes growling noises, which eventually kind of get funny, and there's even a, uh, a gag about it, about Velma when she's got her glasses off, saying that the Black Knight doesn't... Uh, the, the Black Knight sounds like Shaggy when Shaggy's got a cold. She thinks it's Shaggy and gives... Uh, and is gonna try and give him medicine. Kind of funny stuff. Overall, like I said, not the best episode. Definitely not the worst a pretty good introduction episode uh, in in some ways, but in other ways, not so much. Still, I think I'm going to give it a thumbs up. going to recommend it to you guys. Definitely watch it, even if you're a cursory viewer of Scooby-Doo, even just because it's the first episode ever. So, that is it for this episode uh, of the Scooby Logs 50th Anniversary. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you're going to enjoy it in the future because I'm still going to make them. I don't care how many, how many or how few views I get. So, rock on. If you like, subscribe. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.